Hello everybody and welcome to another vlog on the Brain Attack music channel. Um, I had a bit of an epiphany, well at least I, I think I did, um, a few weeks ago when I think I stumbled upon, upon even one of the main reasons why we struggle with certain aspects of making improvements after our brain injury, after our strokes, after our brain attacks. And it was this, my walking stick, that helped me uh, have this epiphany. If we think of our pre-stroke existence, doing what we would normally do in everyday life just to function, most of what we would do would be subconscious. In other words, we wouldn't really be thinking about it. So if we were walking around our local town, shopping centre, whatever, we would be walking around, we wouldn't be thinking about walking, we'd be looking at, oh, what's that over there in that shop? That looks quite an interesting display. I think I'll walk over there and have a look a bit closer at the window display. And there's some people coming this way, so people coming that way, and I'll go through here and I'll just stop a bit, let that person go through. But we're not thinking about that. We're navigating our way through the crowd. We're not thinking about it. We're focusing on the display and we're already looking at oh there's a oh look they've got some cds in there in that charity shop oh they might even have a vinyl this is my this is my big thing I, I might go in there and see what they've got but the simple act of walking across a crowded street or across a crowded shopping mall and going into a shop we don't think about we're thinking about what's attracting us in there the window display as I say that's that that's kind of our, our focus of attention we're not thinking about the walking all the walking is unconscious thought the conscious thought is oh I wonder what they've got in there I wonder how much stuff is etc etc and if you apply that to other stuff we're in the car driving now, most of us, when we start driving, if you can think back to when you first started driving, well, what are these pedals? We are oh, got a, that, so that one I push. Okay, now I got, oh, there's a, there's a, look in the mirror. Oh, God, crack it, look in the mirror and oh, crunch the gears. But as we practice and as we practice and as we practice, all of those component parts of driving, starting the engine, braking, accelerating, changing gears, using the rear view mirror, using the wing mirrors, you know what it is, yep, mirror, indicate, manoeuvre, I think, something like that, anyway, but basically look before you do stuff, that is all, in the early stages of driving, very much conscious thought, and it's difficult because our brain is trying to process all of that information in parallel at the same time, and it struggles. So one or two things we're probably thinking about and then the third, fourth and fifth thing tend to fall by the wayside until we need to think of them. Then we drop maybe the first and second thing and think about the third and fourth thing. And that's kind of how we that's how we learn. And then we learn and we practice to the stage where once you've been driving for, you know, five, 10, 15 years, you pretty much don't think about it. It's moved from conscious thought all to subconscious thought. So in the early days of driving, you couldn't listen to music and have a conversation with the passenger because you're too busy. <laughs> Which pedals indicate mirror? What? Oh, OK. However, once you practice and practice and practice and practice and practiced, it becomes it moves from conscious thought into subconscious thought. And then your conscious thought can be about talking to the people in the car thinking about playing some music, listening to the music, thinking about where you're going, everything, but actually physically driving the car. And then something might happen in the car. You go over a bump, somebody comes up behind you and you see them in the mirror and all of a sudden you're not really listening to the music anymore and maybe not listening to the conversation in the car anymore because you're concentrating on, you know, is he going to 
overtake me or oh, what are they doing or oh, there's a bend coming up I better watch etc etc so most of the time we flip between conscious thought and unconscious thought and the more we practice stuff the more it moves from conscious to unconscious which brings me to my dear old friend the walking stick I don't know how many of you walk with a walking stick whether you've tried whether you haven't I don't know however my experience was it took me I would think probably about six months to get the hang of this because it's not it's not natural and the idea is that when you move for me I need it on my right hand side so the idea is when you move your left foot forward you move your stick forward which is on your right hand so left foot forward because if you think when you walk that's what happens when your left foot goes forward your left arm doesn't go forward your left arm goes back it's your right comes forward so this I found very very hard to get used to and very counterintuitive the fact that when my left foot went forward I needed to move this forward so my pivot point was then my right foot because my left foot and my right hand with the stick was moving forward and then when they made contact with the ground I then moved my right foot forward and I had to really think about that to the extent that when I stopped walking and turned to look at something because I still struggle with walking and looking I have to look where I'm going I can't do both so if I want to look at something I have to stop so I'd stop I'd look at what I needed to look at or talk to my wife or whatever and then it was starting again <laughs> and that I found really difficult because I have to write right right okay right 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 okay so it's left foot right hand right and off we go so my walking had moved from not thinking about it subconscious thought to really really conscious I really really had to think about it and I suspect the last time I really 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 thought hard about walking was when I was three or something I I don't know something like that so if you think about some of the things that, that you've been doing as part of your rehabilitation part of your making improvements after your event stroke brain injury whatever you can probably relate some of what I've been saying to that whether you've been trying to pick something up with an affected hand you've had to make the movement very very conscious and I know I had this with my drumming my my left hand was I mean it's still not great now but it, it was far worse seven and a half coming up for eight years ago and I had to really really work at it and stuff that I would do with my left hand for drumming that I wouldn't think about because I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and moved from conscious thought to unconscious thought 30 years ago now I had to really think about what I was doing and it, it, and it, and it slows everything up when you've got to think about stuff when you think of a top sports person tennis player cricketer batsman you know there's a there's a the, the, the fast bowlers are bowling at the batsman at around about 85 90 miles an hour the really fast ones slightly over maybe up to 95 miles an hour and they're 18 yards away so a batsman at test level facing a fast bowler has got about half a second reaction time you can't really think because <laughs> by the time you've gone oh I think it's oh it's gone <laughs> next ball now I think what I'll do with it oh it's gone so you can't there's not enough time to think so the majority of what test batsmen do is purely unconscious thought because they practiced and they practiced and they practiced and they practiced and that they're used to picking up the flight of that ball coming at them at 80 90 miles an hour and responding to it literally in a split second that's what they do so they're not thinking about that's purely 
unconscious thought, but they've had to practice and practice and practice. So like me with a stick, and I still have to think about it a bit. And I've been using the stick now for probably best part of seven years. I still have to think, not anywhere near as much as I used to, but I still have to think a little bit about which foot, where, where do I go? It's not instinctive, not yet. A bit more practice, it will be. So I think this whole issue of stuff moving from conscious thought to unconscious thought is really relevant for our rehabilitation and our making improvements because so much of what we did prior to our stroke and our brain injury that was automatic is now not and it's moved back from unconscious thought to conscious thought and we have to really think about it because we have to really think about it that is putting a lot more work our brain's way and guess what our brain is damaged and it's having to work harder because we're having to really think about stuff so it's going to get tired it's going to get fatigued and i think that's why a lot of brain injury survivors struggle with fatigue it's because their brain is having to work really hard because so much of what was automatic unconscious thought is now having to be thought through even if it's just getting up out of the chair shuffling across the room going to the toilet and coming back again that probably from the brain point of view requires i don't know four times more effort than it did before when we just got up the chair walked across the room went to the toilet didn't really think about it. we're thinking about other stuff we weren't thinking about what we were doing we were thinking about other stuff now we've got to really think about what we're doing and that's going to bring on fatigue anyhow that's courtesy of my walking stick and a bit of an epiphany that's all for now thank you very much for watching please leave comments below in the comments section and um, I'll see you soon Take care now. Bye-bye.